Good health to all from Rexall. From Hollywood, the Jimmy Durante Show. Ink, a dink a dee, a dink a doo, a dink a dee. Oh, what a tune for me. Yes, it's the Jimmy Durante Show with Arthur Treacher, Candy Candido, Roy Bargy and his orchestra, our Rexall sportscaster, Tommy Harmon, yours truly, Howard Petrie, and our special guest tonight, Lucille Ball, brought to you by 10,000 Rexall drugstores who carry the complete line of top quality Rexall drug products. And here he is, not a transcription, not a wax reproduction, but the one and only Jimmy Durante in person... Start off each day with a song. Now even when things go wrong, you feel better. You even look better. Stop the music. Stop the music. And now, as a tribute to our musical orchestra, I'd like to introduce the most important members: voice flutist Joe Petrillo, voice clarinetist Tommy Petrillo, voice trombone Peter Petrillo. <laughs> I'll bet this is one band that will be making records next year. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're under no obligation to laugh. However, if you don't, we have a brand new audience warming up in the basement. <laughs> How many kidding, folks? Oh, now, as I see your sharpest attack again tonight, just as you were on the Information Please program the other night. Jimmy, was I impressed. You're not the only one, Howard. Boy, did I amaze Spatterman and the rest of those experts. Uh, Why, the minute I walked in the door, I won a set of Encyclopedia Britannicas. You did? Yeah, they couldn't guess what I was. <laughs> but, Howard, if you think those exploits were confusing, just listen to this question they gave me. If a projectile traveling at supersonic speed through the stratosphere reached its destination in seven seconds, how long would it take a woodpecker with chat lips to remove the pimento from a stubborn olive? <laughs> hey, that's some question. Who sent that in? J.C. Cooch from Raccoon Tail, Nebraska. And I'll bet $50 there ain't a guy in the world that can answer it. I can! The answer is two minutes, 35 and two-thirds seconds. That's the right answer. What's your name? J.C. Cooch, Raccoon Tail, Nebraska. <laughs> Trapped again, me and my big mount. I'd get rid of it, only it's such a handy place to keep my teeth. <laughs> Come in. Mr. Durante, the British Embassy has requested me to instruct you concerning protocol at the wedding of Princess Elizabeth. You are attending, aren't you? Yes, if the cleaners return my knickers in time. <laughs> Very well, then. Here's the procedure you are to follow. During the ceremony, you are to stand two paces to the left of the Duke of Gloucester, provided Lady Ashley does not attend. In which event, you curtsy to the Marchioness of Sussex, bow to the Duke of Essex, kiss the hand of the Countess of Middlesex, and retreat two paces to the left of Lord Lonsbury of Worcestershire. Unless Lady Stanhope is standing beside Lord Deming, in which case you recognize rank and fall back four paces to the rear of the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Are there any questions? Yes, one question. If I bring hard-boiled eggs in my lunchbox, will Britain supply the salt? <laughs> I bid you good day, sir. Good day, sir. Good Jimmy, day. Jimmy, are you serious about going to the wedding of Elizabeth and Phillips? Are you Josh and Howard? Why, I've already sent the wedding gift. It's a dozen towel marked His Highness, Her Highness, and RDB. RDB? What does that mean? Rub, don't blot. <laughs> Also sent the prince a personal gift for foggy days. A monocle with a windshield wiper on it. <laughs> but that is neither fish nor chips. Howard, I'm expecting Lucille Ball at our house for dinner. We're planning to do a movie together. I've always wanted to work with a glamour girl. Glamour girl? Glamour girl? Did somebody say glamour girl? <laughs> Man the lifeboats, men. We've struck a typhoon. <laughs> Mr. Durante, don't forgive me for intruding. I'm Lucia Ball's understudy, and she sent me over to rehearse. After all, anything you were going to do with her, you can do with me. I know Truman wants us to get along with less, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, Mr. Durante, you're so 
witty. Now, now, before we start the rehearsal, I should like to test the microphone. Please do, please do. La, 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 la. Well, you just blew Tehachapi off the network. Would you like to try for Pismo Beach? <laughs> You mad wag, you. Now, come on, let's rehearse this scene from the script Lucille has in mind. Oh, this is a wonderful part for you. It gives you a chance to run the gamut of emotion. A big part for me, huh? huh? All right, let's try it. Ah, oh, Eustace. So you've come back to me after all the weary months and years of waiting. <laughs> oh, you don't know. You don't know how I've missed you, how I've needed you, how I've wanted you. Are you all right, Eustace? Are you, darling? Are you? Well, I... No, no, don't speak. <laughs> Look at you. Oh, Eustace. Did you give me any thought when you were away on your long journeys? Did you miss me? Did you? Did you? Well, I... No, no, never mind. No. I can see it in your eyes. Great part I got here. I hope I can remember it. No! You never get a thought to me. Oh, you're not going to be the monster. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Oh, darling, I didn't mean that. I could bite my tongue for saying that. Bite your tongue? You'll have to catch it first. <laughs> oh, darling, kiss me. Kiss me. Oh, it's been so long since I've had a chance to go out and have a fling. Sorry, I'm busy now. Fling it somewhere else. <laughs> Besides, I'm already betrothed, which sometimes leads to marriage. Let me tell you about it. Folks, I'm going to tell you about my gal that I lost. Folks, I'm gonna find her, and no matter the cost, at times I think this little girl is out of this world, which makes my search for her a little inconvenient. But I'll tell you just what I'm gonna do. A description of her I'll give to you. She's a little bit this and a little bit that and a little bit thin and a little bit fat, so send my baby back to me. She's a little bit blonde, a little brunette, a little bit rich, a little bit in debt. And that describes her to a T. What a gal. She's got a little nose that turns up. My nose turns down. And every time we kiss, we lock bumpers. Ha, ha, ha. She's a little bit this, a little bit that, and a little bit high, and a little bit fat. So bring my baby back to me. You know, the other day I threw a big party to announce our engagement. The big event of the party was the game I introduced. A scavenger hunt. Everybody had to go out and bring back the strangest, most broken down thing you could find. And it's the last time I'll ever play that game. They brought me back three times before they found out I was the host. <laughs> it's a good thing my girl identified me. I'm so devoted to her. I like her too. I love her limpid blonde eyes and the one that is blue. Yes, she's a little bit strong, a little bit frail. I've given you every little detail, so bring back my baby to me. If you want to be sure that the product is pure when you ask for drug preparation, buy the Rexall line at the Rexall sign of Rexall Identification. 25% of America buys its drug needs in Rexall drug stores. Yes, the name Rexall identifies everything fine in drugs. For Rexall is that large and respected family of more than 2,000 different drug products, always available at Rexall drug stores everywhere. There is a fine Rexall product for every drug need. For example, for a fine vitamin supplement, take Rexall Plenamin. For fine aspirin, take Rexall aspirin. For fine toothpaste, take Rexall toothpaste. Let the name, Rexall, identify everything fine in drugs for you. For the name, Rexall, is your constant guarantee of fine drug products. The finest that science and pharmaceutical skill can produce. 25% of America buys its drug needs in Rexall drug stores. If you want to be sure that the product is pure when you ask for a drug preparation, buy the Rexall line at the Rexall sign of Rexall identification. Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> As you know, ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Durante has invited Lucille Ball to his house for dinner to discuss her new picture, in which Durante plans to play the part of her lover. Her lover. 
<laughs> Silly, isn't it? As we look in on him now, he is making frenzied preparations for her arrival, aided and abetted, of course, by Treacher. Treacher, let's get ready for our guest. This joint needs organizing. Don't you think this house needs a thorough cleaning? Cleaning is hardly the word. While dusting this morning, I discovered another room. <laughs> How nice. I'll convert it into a nursery. My police dog is expecting rookies. <laughs> but this is no time for trivialities, Treacher. Miss Boyd. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, boy, come on. Let me go back to that, I will, please. I, like I think I can do a little better. Right. But this is no time for trivialities, Treacher. <laughs> Miss Ball will be here any minute. Lay out my dinner jacket, my cutaway vest, and reverse my celluloid collar. Yes, sir. And, Treacher, when you serve dinner tonight, I want you to look sartorially correct. I'm expecting you will wear a dress shirt. But I'm sorry, sir, but you're wearing it tonight. However, don't concern yourself. I can always whitewash my chest. Whitewash your chest? <laughs> What will you do for shirt studs? Well, I happen to have three very convenient moles. <laughs> ah, Treacher, you're a genius. Remind me to reward you with a soggy Tootsie Roll. How provincial. May I ask, what is the purpose of Miss Ball's visit here tonight? Since I have the next line, I'll answer that question. <laughs> Miss Ball wants us to discuss her scenario. She's looking for a handsome and talented leading man. Oh, how nice of you to have thought of me. Wait a minute. What makes you think Lucille Ball would prefer you to me? Well, can I help it if I'm the sophisticated type? Women like a man who has lived. I've lived? I mean recently. <laughs> Besides, you know, to intrigue a woman of Miss Ball's caliber, one must not only be handsome and talented, but also well-dressed, suave and debonair. Well, I'm well-dressed, suave and debonair, ain't I? Ho, ho, ho. You have had your answer. <laughs> Boy, that's gratitude for you, folks. And to think I let the hem down on all my nightgowns so they would fit him. <laughs> but, preacher... All right, what do you want for dinner? Watch this. It's a cook I hired for the occasion. For a minute, I thought it was Sadie Hawkins' day and somebody sent us a hawk. <laughs> Never mind the smart cracks, hose nose. How do you want your dinner, boiled or fried? What have you got for dinner? Nothing. Burlish. <laughs> Teacher, our guest will be here any minute, and you mean to say there's nothing for dinner? What about that plum duff we had yesterday? Isn't there any left? No, but I could serve some plain duff. What's plain duff? Plain duff is plum duff after you've taken the plum out of the duff, and all that's left is the stuff. <laughs> Put blues on the end of that, and you got a hit song. <laughs> that must be Lucille Ball now. Quick, preacher, where's my perfume? Yeah, that's it. Now squirt some on my hair, in my eyebrows, behind my ears, under my nose. That's it. I've laid a perfect trail to my lips. Open the door, preacher. Uh, wait till Lucille Ball gets a whiff to this. Is somebody cooking cabbage? <laughs> Lucille Ball! In person? I'm overwhelmed, Lucille. The exuberance of this unctuous occasion and the mere quintessence of your celestial radiance premeditates my bountiful soul with palpitation of grandiosius jocanunity. <laughs> Jimmy, if you think that over, I'm sure you'll take it back. Take it back? Nothing. I had a hard enough time getting rid of it. <laughs> well, don't let me excite you, Jimmy. I'm just like any other blonde. What do you mean, blonde? Your hair is red. Red? Please, Jimmy. In Hollywood, we don't say that word. <laughs> but step inside the rotunda, Lucille. You've never seen my house before. Oh. I think it's terrific, Jimmy. And you've already decorated for Halloween. Oh, I love that pumpkin head in the corner with a silly grin. Please, that's my Uncle Louie looking at the pictures in Esquire. <laughs> well, you do have a swell place here, Jimmy. It's so homey. Oh, that's a lovely motto hanging over the dresser. Did you write it? Of course, and I crocheted it, too. <laughs> but my pointed nose, I only needed one needle. <laughs> oh, what poetry. So sentimental. It takes a heap of living to make a house a home. It's a haven to return to wherever you may roam. It's a place of lasting beauty, 
be you king or be you slave. So whenever you want comfort, oh, Jimmy, I can't. Go on, read it. Scrape your pan with Burma shade. <laughs> you know, Lucille, I don't deserve all the glory for that poem. Longfellow pitched in on the last line. Well, Jimmy, as long as we're comfortable here, maybe we can start talking about the picture we're going to make together. Marvelous. Why don't, why don't we do something like your last picture, Her Husband's Affairs? I can just see myself in one of those political pictures. Being elected president and moving into the White House in Los Angeles. Oh, Jimmy, the White House is 2,000 miles away. You don't know federal law. You don't know the Los Angeles city limits. <laughs> this town is so spread out, Beverly Hills is now a town in Iowa. <laughs> Jimmy, I'd like to do a part in the picture that's a little different. You know, a character part. Ah, uh, Lucille, that's what I like about you. You're so versatile. No, oh, thank you, Jane. It's people like you that make people like me realize that we should carry the art of Sarah Bernhardt to all the people of the universe and to people wherever there are people. <laughs> Folks, you have just heard we the people. <laughs> Listen, don't tell me you're from Brooklyn. Of course not, stupid. I'm from the Bronx, and they love me there. Yeah, when the fellow saw me in her husband's affairs with Francho Tone, they awarded me a very great honor. A great honor? Yes. They voted me Miss Other End of the Davenport for 1947. <laughs> <laughs> and Jimmy... You know, my family was very refined. I come from a long line of Murphys, Kellys, and O'Toole. But my mother married a Mulligan. But Mulligan is an Irish stew. Well, she knew that, but she married him anyway. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lucille, you really got it on the ball. <laughs> May I join you? Everybody wants to get into the act. How are you, Mr. Treacher? Good to Miss Ball. By the way, have you seen our library yet? Oh, yes, and I'm dying to read The Fall and Decline of the Grecian Satellite by Golimio Robles. I read but a Ms. lot. Miss Ball, my favorites are Aristotle's soliloquies and Spinoza's Spheric Dialectics. I spend oh, the time the in the... Oh, but the best I ever read were The Anatomy of Melancholia and Anecdotes of an Antiquated Octogenarian. Did anyone see what Dick Tracy did to Mumbles today? <laughs> Well, well, dinner will be ready in a moment. Take my arm, Lucille. Before dinner, I've got a little surprise for you in the music room. Wonderful, Jimmy. You know, our singer Peggy Lee has been on the sick list, and Jack Benny loaned me a sportsman quartet to fill in tonight. Are you there, fellas? <laughs> Sounds like the mating call of a contented cow. <laughs> Gee, it was generous of Jack Benny to loan you his quartet. Hello? Stop pounding me, Jack. The check is in the mail. <laughs> carry on, sportsman. Carry on. Far below the Mexican border, where the senorita stroll beneath the moon, I think there's a bold and dashing vaquero, and every night you hear him croon. I think in my adobe hacienda there's a touch of Mexico. I think cactus lovelier than orchids blooming in the patio. I think soft desert stars and this drum of guitar make every evening seem so sweet. I think in my adobe hacienda life and love are more complete. More complete. I think so. See, I think. In my there's a touch of Mexico. Soft desert stars and the strum of guitar Make every evening seem so sweet I think In my adobe hacienda Life and love are more complete 
I wanna go back to my little Adobe shack in Mexico City. I think. Cause that's where life and love are more complete. It's sweet and very neat. It's quite a treat, so I repeat. Life and love are more complete. Pardon us for singing in your faces. I think. We The distinguished Rexall quality story begins in the Rexall Laboratory. Yes, the Rexall Laboratory is one of the largest and most completely equipped pharmaceutical laboratories in the world. Here, more than 2,000 different Rexall drug products are scientifically compounded under the exacting direction of doctors, chemists, and pharmacists. That's why, when your Rexall druggist says, for example... You can always depend upon Rexall Bismarex to bring you prompt and prolonged relief from acid indigestion, dyspepsia, or heartburn. You may be sure your Rexall druggist knows what he's talking about. Thanks to the unsurpassed quality standards of the Rexall Laboratory, you can depend on any drug product bearing the name Rexall. The quality of one Rexall product will tell you the quality story for all Rexall products. Remember, 25% of America buys its drug needs at Rexall drugstores. If you want to be sure that the product is pure when you ask for a drug preparation, buy the Rexall line at the Rexall sign of Rexall identification. Good health to all from Rexall. Lucille, during dinner I thought the whole thing over. And I think we ought to make a romantic love story where I play your lover. <clears throat> How do you feel about me making love to you? I'm feeling mighty low. <laughs> Poor darling, she's choked up with emotion. <laughs> you know, Jimmy, I think we should do a psychological murder mystery. I'd rather be the frustrated heroine, and you can be a hard-boiled detective from Homicide. This is stupendous. Why, I'll be another Mark Hackinger. That's Hellinger. We're on the air. <laughs> I'm coming a little late on that line. <laughs> we must be careful, you know, because many of our listeners are bookies. <laughs> Go ahead, Lucille. <laughs> you start the story with one of those dramatic narrations. Okay, here goes. Yes. I killed my husband. I killed him because I needed money. Lots of money. I needed a million dollars. You see, I wanted to buy a Cadillac from Honest John. <laughs> but there was a detective, a cold-blooded detective who preyed on my conscience like the plague. Everywhere I turned, his voice rang in my ears. This is the voice of your conscience. <laughs> Go away. I don't speak to strangers. You can escape me. You murdered your husband. You murdered your husband. You murdered your husband. There's no laugh there, folks, but it helps you follow the story. <laughs> His nagging voice was with me constantly. I was afraid of him because he was clever. Besides being a detective, he wrote mystery novels. Yes, another Edgar Allan Schmo. <laughs> but that first day he came on the case. I saw him coming down the street, and his friends called to him. Hiya, Jimmy. Hello, Jimmy. Hi there, Jimmy. What's new, Jimmy? Hey, look, it's Jimmy. Yes, his name was Charlie. <laughs> when, he knocked on the... when he knocked on the door, I walked from the fourth floor of my mansion down to the front door. Long legs. <laughs> then I opened the door, and there he was. Okay, sister. I'm from the law firm of Zombie, Zombie, and Crawl. Zombie, Zombie, and Crawl? Yes, after two zombies, you got to crawl. <laughs> now look, baby, I know you murdered your husband, and I'm going to prove it. What's in that room there? Oh, please don't go in there. It's only my poor old invalid grandmother. I'll take a look anyway. Pardon me, my dear lady. I can tell by looking at your sweet old face that you had nothing to do with the murder. But I gotta hear it from your own tender lips. Ah, drop dead! <laughs> Poor darling. She was getting a broom ready for Halloween. 
But there's something suspicious about this case. When we examined the corpse, we found 32 bullet holes in his body, but not one bullet hole in his clothes. How do you account for that? Must have been an inside job. <laughs> A logical deduction. But who is this low character coming over here? Oh, that's my butler. Uh, this is Detective Durante. How do you do? <laughs> I haven't heard a laugh like that since I lost my halter at the YMCA. <laughs> What's your name, butler? My name is Lester Chester Sylvester Hettle Nesta Vesta. Lester Chester Sylvester Van Nestle Hester Festa Hester Sylvester? You know, folks, we have the wealthiest writers in radio. They get paid by the word. <laughs> Now, you stick around, Lester Chester. I've got to find some clues. Oh, I can't stand it any longer. I did it. I shot my husband, stabbed him, and strangled him, and hit him over the head with a club. And I admit it. Words, words. I'm looking for clues. <laughs> stop, stop! Detective Durrani. <laughs> I won't let her take the blame. I murdered him. Oh, it's my secret lover, Candido. And when you see him, you can see why I'm keeping him secret. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful, he's a gangster and a cutthroat. I got my gun on me. Tell me, Candida, how did you become a hoodlum? Well, I started in high society, drifted to the middle classes and wound up down here in the underworld. <laughs> so you confess that you're the murderer, huh? Well, we were all in it together. The wife, the butler, and me. Come on, Lester Chester, let's run for it. Come back here or I'll shoot. How do you like that? I shot all three of them. Sound man must use carbon paper. <laughs> what do you know? I'm in heaven. What do you know? I'm in heaven, too. What do you know? Low man again. <laughs> Friends, here are those foremost Rexall reminders for the week. Remember, 25% of America buys its drug needs in Rexall drugstores. Remember, Rexall is that large and respected family of more than 2,000 different drug products. Remember, you can always depend on any drug product bearing the name Rexall. Remember, Rexall drug products are available in Rexall drugstores everywhere. To shame, Howard, and I'd like to add, I do my shopping at a Rexall store, buying Rexall drugs, and furthermore, hombre, I'll go, he prefers them to, we buy Rexall, that's all. How do you do? In just a moment, we'll switch to Chicago to hear a Rexall sportscast of Tommy Harmon. Meanwhile, from this end, we'll say Rexall for tonight from Arthur Treacher, Roy Barge, yours truly, Howard Petrie, and Jimmy Durante, who says thanks to Miss Lucille Ball. You were very sweet to visit us, and next week's folks, our good friend Bing Crosby will be with us on our Rexall show at the same time, same station. Good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are. This program was produced and directed by Phil Cohan. And now, for a Rexall sportscast from Chicago, we bring you Tommy Harmon. Our Rexall football spotlight this week is split between the Midwest and the Southwest, two games that may change the national football picture. In the Midwest, the Michigan Wolverines moved to Champaign to lock horns with the Fighting Illini. Last year, the alert Illini capitalized on Michigan's fumbles to win the game and also the honor to represent the Big Nine in the Rose Bowl. Because Michigan had a tough one with Minnesota last Saturday, I look for the Wolverines to bounce back and win this game to keep their undefeated record clear. Dallas, Texas is the scene for the battle of two of the Southwest's undefeated teams, Southern Methodist and Texas. When the whistle blows in this game, the spectators will see forward passing at its best. For Texas, it'll be Bobby Lane in the driver's seat. For SMU, it'll be sophomore Doak Walker pulling the strings. For the people in the stands, it should be a football thriller second to none in the record book. But between you and me... I had a talk with the Swami and his crystal ball, so I'll call Texas with cross fingers. On behalf of Jimmy Durante and the whole gang, this is Tom Harmon saying good night and good health to all. For...